So Ben Franklin, one of our great founders, said that we finally value water when the well goes dry. He was wrong. We don't value water in the United States. We, go, we wake up in the morning, we turn on the tap, and out comes as much water as we want for less than we pay for cell phone service or for cable television. We think of water in the United States as we do the air. It's infinite and inexhaustible, when in fact, for all practical purposes, it's quite finite and quite exhaustible. So supply and demand, well, it's an imbalance, and that's why we have a crisis. The so population growth is part of it. People who are studying climate change think that that's likely to be just terrible. Uh, locally, it appears that the temperature of Lake Superior is going up quite a bit. Whether that's global warming, I don't know if it's global warming, but it appears to be very serious. As you have the temperature going up, you have less ice cover in the winter, you have more evaporation loss off the surface. Uh, it's certainly something to be uh, concerned about. Some of the other demands for water uh, are, I think, kind of unusual. This is uh, a power shower made by Kohler. Um, it sells for about, I think, $1,500 or $1,500 to $2,500. Uh, then there's bottled water. Um, I was the first to point the finger at Nestle, uh, actually here in Wisconsin with the fight in 2002, 3, and 4 in my book, Water Follies. Um, I don't think I need to, to go down there. At this point, it's a bit like shooting fish in the barrel, I guess. Here's a, a company that you all know of, but you wouldn't recognize it by this building, but they are a big water consumer. What are they? Google. This is not the Mountain View campus with bearded sandal geeks running around doing code. This is a Google server farm. So whenever you press that search button on your computer, one of these places cranks up. Inside are housed thousands of computers all linked up, all generating heat. Think 10,000 toaster ovens, and you get the idea. And so Google has become a huge user of water because water is a wonderful coolant. I mean, that's why we have radiators in our automobiles. My message is a deadly serious one. U.S. energy policy has been almost entirely ignorant of the water demands that various forms of energy production require, including concentrating solar thermal. It is not green. How about desalination? Well, now we're starting to so show some promise because it is certainly feasible to desalinate ocean water. It's been done in various technologies. Those of you who read Life of Pi know that that's how that guy got across the ocean all those days. But desal is not itself a silver bullet. It has three principal problems. First, it's incredibly expensive. The membranes are very high-tech, very delicate, very expensive, prone to fouling. They need frequent replacement. Second, it takes a lot of energy reinforcing the water energy connection because you're talking about very high pressure and reverse osmosis against these membranes to end up with potable water on one side and all the salt on this side. And third, what do you do with all the salt on this side? The salt didn't go away. It's now merely in a smaller volume of water, and you need to get rid of it. And simply dumping it into the ocean in nearby estuaries is not, from an environmental perspective, at all satisfactory. Still, desalination is possible. It will be part of a portfolio of options if you have a high value use for the water and if you have scarce or few or no uh, other alternatives. How about reusing water? Oh, you bet. This is something we need to do much more of. Now, it's not something that will go down easily. It will have the yuck factor. Uh, when uh, it was proposed in San Diego, a Trib reporter called it the toilet to tap proposal, and it was immediately dead on arrival. <laughs> Still, in Tucson, about 10 percent of our supply is reclaimed water. We use it for golf course irrigation and uh, cemeteries, ballparks, uh, light industrial applications. There are many things you can do with it. It's a terrific use of water. It grows as the community grows, but it too is not a silver bullet. It's expensive. It requires a separate set, se separate set of pipes and valves, painted purple usually, to, so that they don't get confused with the potable system. Still. It's something that we need to do much more of. So a new approach. What are we going to do? First, I want to take a fresh look at the American toilet. 
In 1910, Teddy Roosevelt said we should do something with human waste other than put it in our drinking water. He was right then, he would be right now. That is what we do. The water gets delivered to our homes, it's potable quality. We use only 10% of it for cooking and, and uh, 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 drinking. Fully a third of it we use outdoors to water our lawns and landscape plants. Indoor use, fully a third gets flushed away. That's six billion gallons a day. That's two trillion gallons a year flushed away. Potable water, mixing it with sewage. It's a system that is absolutely insane if you spend more than 30 seconds thinking about it. We need to figure out a new way to dispose of human waste. It's a system that wastes water. It wastes energy by over-treating. It wastes money, more than $50 billion uh, a year. And it compromises human health. Because it turns out that traditional wastewater treatment systems do not remove what the EPA calls emerging contaminants. These are things that are the products of, modern, of the modern pharma industry. Antibiotics, birth control pills, erectile dysfunction medicines, hormone supplements, all these prescription drugs that we take. We ingest, our bodies absorb some of them, we excrete the rest, we flush them away, they go to the treatment plant, and they are not removed by the treatment plant. And the scientists who have studied the water downstream of these treatment plants have found deformed frogs and intersex fish. Now, I don't want to be alarmist about this. The parts and doses are minuscule in the parts per trillion. But my point is we are performing a collective cocktail experiment on our communities, on ourselves, by ingesting these things when we don't know the consequence to human health. Given that the water and wastewater systems now are in a horrible state of disrepair and would require perhaps a trillion dollars to upgrade, now is the time for a national commission to explore alternatives to using water to get rid of human waste. I want to go to the price issue, because this is really, really, really important. And it's very important as you think about your water future here and what kind of companies you can attract and, and, uh, and the like. And the point is simply that we pay nothing for water. We pay more for cell phone and cable. And the reality is you don't pay for water at all, ever, in the United States. Even when you have a bill for the water, all you're paying for is the cost of service, is the cost of having utility that's pumped the water, treated the water, delivered the water, and then treated it again, or whatever they've had to do with it. It's revenue neutral in economist terms, the amount of money that you pay. And in some communities in the United States, there's no charge for, for even that service. So you could turn on the tap 24-7, and you would never get a bill for that. Communities like Sacramento and Fresno, California. And does it matter? You bet it matters. In Clovis, California, right next to Fresno, they have meters, and they use 200 gallons per person per day. Fresno, 300 gallons per person per day. So it's a 50% bump just because we aren't metering the water. In fully a third of American utility, water utilities, the rates are declining block rates. The more water you use, the less you pay for that final unit of water. This is not a system that is, in, is designed to conserve water. It's a system that is bizarrely designed to waste water. So we need to rethink this. We need to recognize a human right to water. It's not that much. 15 gallons per person per day is what the people who have studied it seem to think is about right. If the richest country in the history of the world can't make that commitment to its people, then we are a sorry lot. So let's just take that off the table. And now we need to figure out how to price the other 99% of the water, because that's all that the human right would involve, 1%. So we need to have sensible rates that encourage people to conserve. The third point is that we need to reallocate water. There is no alternative. This is our water supply, giant milkshake glass. And what we have is lots of straws in the glass. And what most states permit, like Georgia, is new straws going into the glass all the time. We need to stop this. We need to have demand offsets. We need to say to someone, if you want to put another straw in this glass, you must persuade someone else to take his or her straw out of the glass so that the situation does not become worse. 
we need to be better stewards of this public resource. 